book lovers, it is G-Swizz here and I'm here today to give you some more underhyped book recommendations. <laughs> like making these videos because I really do like recommending books but not only that I usually want to see some books succeed and then when I find out that they're not necessarily getting the praise that I would anticipate them getting that's when I get confused I also know that not only marketing plays a big part in a book success but also the readership like how many readers actually pick these books up while these books in my opinion have some quality to them I feel like not many people are talking about them here in the book community that's why I decided to make a second part or actually in complete honesty I literally don't know how many underrated or underhyped recommendation videos I've made however you can never have enough because you can never rave enough about the books that you like also if you're getting distracted by this yeah this happened this morning and I have no idea how it happened it could have happened in my sleep so yeah for some reason this finger does not match the others anyway look at me drawing attention to a problem I guess without further ado I want to get straight into some of my underhyped book recommendations and I will explain why I think that they are underhyped and why I personally personally believe they need more hype. Every time I plan to make an underhyped reads recommendation video, I keep on telling myself that I'm going to include this book series in there. Every time, by the time I finish filming or editing the video, I realize that I missed out on the Seven Realms series by Cinder Williams Chima. In my opinion, I think that this is one of the most underhyped young adult fantasy series in the online book community because it is so good. It did receive some hype because Cinder Williams Chima's books have received some hype over the years. However, I really feel like this series out of Cinder Williams Chima series was one that did not receive as much hype but also I know that the spin-offs have come out and I think people have been reading the spin-offs and have been raving about the spin-offs however I rarely see people rave about the original series here in the booktube community and it's making me think with Illumicrate and with Fairy Loot picking up old backlist series to make special editions for it makes me realize that this series is truly underhyped because it hasn't really gotten that recognition and I've seen a few people talk about it here in the booktube community Community over the years, but no one's talking about it now. I remember first hearing about the series from Reagan over at Peru's Project, who I used to watch all the time. I still actually very much watch them all the time. My reading tastes from Reagan are completely different. However, sometimes she recommends some really amazing hits when it comes to fantasy, and this was one of the most amazing hits I ever read based on her recommendation. If there was any book series recommendation that I would absolutely thank Reagan for, if I would owe her my life in some sort of way, it'd just be for this series, because I'm so happy that I was recommending recommended this series. I still vividly think about the series even though I read it two years ago. I want to dive back in. I want to read it again and just simmer in it. I love these characters. I love this world so much and it's such an expansive world. I understand that it is difficult to read at times and that's why I'm so thankful that Cinder Williams Chima has a spreadsheet or a PDF file where she explains who the characters are and what function they play in the story because I needed that while I was reading the first and second book because I kept on getting lost. See, everything was easier to pick up after. I had that reference sheet and I didn't need that reference sheet after the first two books. I did additionally want to flag that there are some extra resources for anybody who is looking to read the series. For my contemporary romance novel lovers, I would highly recommend Here for the Right Reasons by Jodie McAllister. This book came out within the last month. I'm not seeing as much hype as I hoped I would when it came to this book. I literally read it within one sitting and it was amazing in my opinion. I absolutely adored Here for the Right Reasons. And you know what? I mentioned this about the charm offensive in my previous underhyped reads video, I'm pretty sure. I don't know what it is with these reality television setting books not necessarily getting as much hype because I really love The Charm Offensive. If you also love The Charm Offensive and you are also in the opinion that The Charm Offensive is underhyped, then oh boy, you have a great surprise in here for the right reasons. It's very cute, but it also really does pull on your heartstrings. I personally love the friends to lovers dynamic in here. Also appreciate the element of being in the competition for convenient purposes and convenient reasons. Reasons. Cece just absolutely pulls at my heartstrings. I absolutely adore her as a protagonist and Dylan I have a massive crush on. This is another reason why I would comp this book to The Charm Offensive. Both The Charm Offensive and Here for the Right Reasons are the first books in Companion series and I cannot wait for their sequels to come out. The sequel to Here for the Right Reasons will be coming out in February. I cannot wait and I believe that the sequel to The Charm Offensive comes out this year. I highly recommend Here for the Right Reasons if you are just a romance contemporary novel lover of any kind. Even though you 
you might not be interested in reality television, trust me, it still has the great romantic tropes that we know and love. Even though it came out like a couple months ago, I reckon that it deserves even more hype. Now I have an underhyped recommendation for my manga lovers here. I don't think I've talked to more than one person in my life about the Alice in Borderland manga, but I mean, it's here, it exists, and I am actually shocked at the fact that it does not have as many Goodreads ratings as it has Netflix viewers. Guys, look, if we were talking about the anime here, if there was an anime for Alice in Borderland, then yes, I totally understand. But it's a live action adaptation that apparently isn't even accurate to the source material, and the source material is gold. It is incredible. It is amazing. I cannot stress it enough. The source material to Alice in Borderland is absolutely incredible. So many people are sleeping on it. People are like, oh, Alice in Borderland, you mean the Netflix show? No, I don't mean the Netflix show. I mean the manga series. The manga series is top tier and so many people are sleeping on it. It is ridiculous. Sorry, I'm a bit passionate this morning, but Alice in Borderland is another series that I would recommend to anyone who is wanting to pick up anything that is underhyped or underrated because it truly is. Even though it is a very well-known name due to it's Netflix adaptation. The manga material is absolutely phenomenal and I really don't want anyone sleeping on the manga material if the Netflix material exists because I can't fully judge the Netflix material because I haven't watched the Netflix material. However, from the people who have watched it, they have described it to me as completely different. And it makes me very sad because the source material itself is incredible. And that's why I would highly recommend it if you haven't picked it up yet. I don't remember how many Goodreads ratings were on this title, but I think it was like under 2,000. And I was thinking to myself, for a very well-known series, the volume one has like under 2,000 ratings. Are you serious? I mean, that makes sense for a very lesser known idea. But Alice in Borderland out of all series, that really shocked me. Alice in Borderland, I would highly recommend to any manga lovers out there. At least manga lovers of the more mature category because I would recommend this series if you like The Hunger Games or if you like Squid Game because yeah, it's like that level of violence. And this is an underhyped book recommendation for anybody who is also a fan of Squid Game, Alice in Borderland, or The Hunger Games but is also a sci-fi or fantasy fan. It does not fall in the young adult category whatsoever. This book and this series falls more into the adult category even though we are following very much new adult characters. And that, my friends, is The Blood Trials by N.E. Davenport. This book, in my opinion, is incredibly underrated. This book came out like around four or five months before filming this video. Personally, I think what surprises me the most is that within the last few months, not many people have rated it on Goodreads. And not many people have actually talked about it here in the booktube community. Admittedly, I have heard a few people bring it up in holes and have talked about it on their channels. However, it's not getting the hype that it truly deserves. It is totally one of the best books that I've read and it really surprised me because I thought to myself that I wouldn't actually appreciate sci-fi as much as I used to until I read this book and all of a sudden I thought to myself, whoa. I do. I should actually read more sci-fi because I was thoroughly surprised by this book. The Blood Trials is incredible. And yes, if you are looking for a story that has similar trials to the comp titles that I gave, but in addition is also for fans of Red Rising and Divergent, look no further, The Blood Trials is for you. I was completely impressed at how this story had me compelled from page one all the way to the end of it. It was a very chunky book that has so much to it. It has a lot of story to it. I reckon that it could have been a standalone, but at the very same time, no, it can't be because we actually need to know what happens next. This being said, it felt like it was written like a standalone because of the density. I think I'm very much used to reading series where there isn't really much density that it's all like spread out. That's not necessarily something to be afraid about because it has a lot of plot. It has something to keep you going. It doesn't have any boring moments. There are moments that you need to stick with to get from A to B, but everything has been kept in here for a reason. I am so tempted to buy multiple editions of this book for the sake of its sales. This is a debut novel as well, so I understand why there's not really much marketing going behind it. This is one of the only book series where I really feel like everything was well established in the first book that I have complete trust that this series is going to wrap up in a complete duology because everything was so fleshed out in here. I felt like I was reading two books. Highly recommend it. If you haven't yet picked it up, please pick up the blood trials for me. Let me know how you go with it. And if you're wanting something new from a fresh new voice, any Davenport has a new book out check out the blood trials. And now I'm going to talk about a book that I went into completely knowing nothing about. I got it in a book subscription service and I recommend this book if you received it either in your fairy loot or in your fey crate because I believe that fey crate also did this as a book pick of the month and I really wish that I got the fey crate edition but I did not. Guys, if you got this vicious grace in your book box, I would highly recommend you read it. No, you don't have to know anything about this book before going into it because that is how I would recommend you read this book. I knew nothing about it. I'd say if you want a comp title to get you in 
the feel slash the mood of the story. I would recommend if you did enjoy Shatter Me or at least the premise of Shatter Me, but think of Shatter Me in the setting of an apocalyptic fantasy. That is all I'm going to say about this book in terms of what it's about, but in terms of my reading experience, I had to devour this book in a day. I really enjoyed the story. The story is also a very character-driven story. I understand why not many people gravitate toward it, but trust me, this is like one of those stories where I would recommend you get halfway into the book, you find out a major plot twist that the rest of the story hinges on, and make your decision up from there. Also really appreciated the direction of the story, and the end of the story had my jaw dropping. I admit I did shed a tear because, oh my goodness, I didn't think that in one day I would be this attached to these characters, but I absolutely was. I absolutely adore the story. Also, if you did end up enjoying Kingdom of the Wicked for the Italian cultural references, I also reckon that you would enjoy this Vicious Grace for the same reasons as well, because there are a lot of influences in there too. If you did receive this book in a book box as of recently, or just over time, whenever you're watching this video, I received this in my fairy loot, and I'm so happy I did, because fairy loot literally gave me my new favorite book. The next underhyped book slash series recommendation. I would highly recommend for anybody who likes young adult mystery. But be aware this book series is nowhere near a new release series. This series came out years ago. Some people were raving about it years ago, but not many. And I reckon because not many people were raving about it years ago, not many people are talking about it now. That, my friends, is the Charlotte Holmes series by Brittany Cavallaro. This series is a very well-crafted, very well-written young adult mystery series. I would also recommend to older readers. There are some trigger warnings for the series. I will put them up on the screen because this series does deal with some pretty heavy topics. Even though some of them are lightly glossed over, the other ones are pretty deep and heavy, and I would recommend the series for anybody who is wanting a young adult series that feels a bit more mature. If I was Brittany Cavallaro, I would have aged these characters up to college age. I do understand that as the series progresses, the characters do get older. However, if I was Brittany Cavallaro, I would have aged up the characters from the get-go because of the dark subject matters. This being said, I reckon that anybody can read it. I think just as long as you're up for the the triggers, it does get dark, but it's one that I do highly recommend because it is very well written and I love Charlotte's character development throughout the series and I love that she finds her own voice. This series is very interesting because half of the series is in Jamie's perspective, Jamie Watson's perspective, and then the second half of the series is mostly in Charlotte's perspective. So you're getting to see Charlotte from the lens of Jamie at first, and then as the series progresses, Charlotte comes into her own as a character in the series. And what I do have to say is that Brittany Cavallaro did that excellently. I didn't agree with that choice at first when I was first reading it because I wanted to know more about her from her perspective. This being said, Brittany Cavallaro, I could not fault her decision there after reading the entire series. I really feel like this series does not get enough praise. If the series is still in print, I don't know whether it is or not. I would highly recommend you pick the books up. Brittany Cavallaro is an excellent writer. Charlotte Holmes and Jamie Watson are great characters and I want everyone to follow them. Ironically, the last three books slash series I'm going to be recommending are all independently published series and they are all for fantasy romance lovers who absolutely love and adore fairy tale-esque stories or book series with magical elements in them. So first of all, I want to talk about a book series by Emma Hamm that I don't necessarily see being talked about as much as her other series. This is the Of Goblin King series. This is a five book series starting off with Of Goblins and Gold. I hear a lot of people talk about her Heart Fae series and I also hear a lot of people talk about her Dragons of Umbra series. Funnily enough, I believe that the Heart Fae series was written before the series and the Dragons of Umbra series is her current series running at the moment, but this series came just before her Dragons of Umbra series. I believe that this book series was only recently published between 2020 and 2021. These books are really short. They're like 200 page books. This book series is only like around a thousand pages altogether. However, it's a series that I highly recommend for anybody who's wanting some short reads. But the story is pretty much written like one big fairy tale. This book series essentially starts off with the protagonist wanting to save her sister. Madness ensues from there because she ends up meeting the Goblin King and an adventure awaits her. Like all of a sudden the series changes tone, it shifts into something completely different, something completely unexpected, but if you like romance then I reckon that you would really love this story. The story is definitely one that I would recommend for young adult readers who are wanting to transition into new adult fantasy because there's not necessarily many new adult references, however it's definitely very much rich in the new adult fantasy tropes as well if you're wanting to read a completed 
completed series by Emma Hamm but don't know where to start. This is actually where I started because I'm very much looking forward to reading her current ongoing series, the Dragon of Umbra series, and I have to say that I was thoroughly impressed by the Goblin King series. The second last underhyped book recommendation I have to give today is Master of Crows by Grace Draven. This is a book from Grace Draven that is a standalone, but I believe that Grace Draven is mostly known for her Wraith King series, and as much as I love Wraith King, Master of Crows is genius. It is beautiful, and I would highly recommend it if you like Beauty and the Beast in any way, shape, or form. Even though I don't actually know whether this is a Beauty and the Beast reimagining, I don't know whether I've mentioned that before. It's so magical, and what I like about Grace Draven's writing is that she doesn't necessarily just focus on the romantic plot of her novels. She also very much focuses on the fantasy plot and the world building behind everything. That's what I really appreciate because this one <laughs> standalone is very much fleshed out. I wasn't necessarily just here for the romance, even though the romance is actually the main driving factor in the story. It does not mean that it's the only thing in the story. And that's what I appreciate about this book because I could still appreciate a book that is very well fleshed out. And it's something that I can be very much satisfied with at the end of the day. Also, I believe that the world of Master Crows and Wraith Kings connect in some sort of way. I believe that there's a connection novella that comes sometime after this book. And I don't know whether I want to read it or not because some people say that it's fan service and some people say that it's a good continuation, but not a complete book. I'm still working that out because I really love this story. And in some way, I'm fine with leaving it at this story. This being said, I don't recommend standalones that much on my channel. However, if you're wanting a fantasy standalone that will leave you satisfied to the last page, Master of Crows is the one for you. And this is coming from someone who does not recommend standalones because I'm never usually satisfied by them. The last underhyped series that I have to recommend is a very specific recommendation. This recommendation goes out to anybody who loves the Cruel Prince trilogy or who is wanting a story that's a little bit more fleshed out and has a bit more nuance to it. I would highly recommend the Fair Isle trilogy by Tessandra Odette. This has become one of my new favorite trilogies of all time and this series is very much expansive because there are spin-off romance novels in this world and I'm so excited to read them. I love this series so much that I don't only just have the bind up that I've shown in my videos previously, I also have now bought the new covers. I also very much like the artwork that is underneath every single one of them. I'm just obsessed with the series. What I like about the series is that it deals with a similar premise to The Cruel Prince, but it's definitely very different, but it also gives you what you wish you had from The Cruel Prince. If anything, it has a more wholesome romance to it, in my opinion. I do appreciate the character development in the story, even though the main protagonist becomes a bit unlikable throughout it. She's pretty much going on a journey of discovering as to whether keeping her humanity is important or is good enough at all. And honestly, I have to say that the way that Tessandra Odette wrote that was genius. I don't agree with some of the character decisions in this book series. I do have to admit some of them did make me feel uneasy. However, I'm happy that Tessandra Odette was able to work around that by the end of the story. I'm kind of fine with being a little bit uncomfortable when it came to the series because if anything, I was very much appreciative of the character journey that our protagonist went through. Knowing when to stand up for herself, but also knowing when it is really important to stand up for others. I appreciate that character journey and that's why I do recommend this series. I don't see many people talking about it here in the booktube community. I know that a lot of people do talk about it on bookstagram because these book covers are absolutely gorgeous and when you have a beautiful book cover, the cover reveals go wild on there. This book series is incredible and in my personal opinion, I reckon that more people need to talk about Tessandra Odette on the booktornet because she's an incredible writer. And yes, that is why I bring her up in this video today as a recommendation. Actually, when I think about it, I think I recommended the Layla trilogy in a previous underhyped recommendations video. This being said, I recommend her works. I reckon that she deserves more hype, period. So I guess that's gonna be it for this video today, book lovers. If you happen to stay till the end of the video, leave me the orange heart emoji in honor in honor. If you happen to enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet already joined the amazing community of book lovers. And also, I have social medias. Matt G Swizzle Books on Twitter and Instagram, and I'm also Goodreads. That's www.goodreads.com slash gswizzle. And finally, I'm at TikTok. Matt G Swizzle on TikTok if you want to follow me there for some bookish content. I love you, book lovers, and I will see you later. Peace. Double. 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 Double.